Good morning one and all. I am Dr. Shalini Ray, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Medicine. In today's class, we will discuss about adult immunization. At the end of today's class, you all will be able to tell what are the different vaccines indicated for adults, what are the contraindications for such vaccines, what are the vaccines indicated for the travelers, and what are the spe special situations where adult immunization is indicated. Now, as we all know that in uh, the field of medicine, immunization is one of the most cost effective and most successful intervention. Now, today there is a lot of buzz for adult immunization. There are various reasons for this. Now, first of all, um, streptococcus pneumonia, which is one of the most important cause of hospital acquired infections. Secondly, we have increased international travel, which increases our risk for uh, exposure to infectious agents. We have communicable diseases like tetanus and we have hepatitis B carriers around more than 40 million. So all these things have led to WHO to issue a list of vaccines for adult immunization. Now today's class we will be discussing only a few vaccines which are most important from the from Indian aspect. Now first of all coming to hepatitis A. As we all know it was earlier known as infectious hepatitis and in 70 to 95 percent of the individuals, hepatitis A is symptomatic. However, universal immunization with hepatitis A is never indicated. Now, people who are drug users or who are working in the lab setting or um, persons who receive clotting factors, people with chronic liver disease, among those individuals only hepatitis A vaccination is indicated. We have many kinds of vaccines. I mean. Uh, vaccines from different manufacturers, but the most commonly used vaccine is uh, Havrix, which is given as two doses intermuscular 0.5 ml. It is given as 0 and 6 to 18 months. That means the first dose is given at 0 and the next one can be given at any interval from 6 to 18 months. We also have a combination, vac combination vaccine, uh, hepatitis A and hepatitis B combination, which is Twinrix. Now this is given at 0 one and six months dosing and it is a killed vaccine 0.5 ml im now there are not major adverse reactions shown uh, by these vaccines but uh, the local uh, adverse reactions can be any uh, pain at the site of injection or soreness and systemic uh, uh, adverse effects include headache nausea and uh, this is uh, basically a very safe vaccine coming to the next disease which is hepatitis b Hepatitis B is having a lot of serious consequences in a country like India, wherein the chronic disease can lead to uh, cirrhosis of liver or uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. So hepatitis B uh, vaccination against hepatitis B is indicated in many situations. First of all, all of us, like the, all the health professionals, household contacts and the sex partners of those who are HPS, AG uh, carriers, then people who are seeking any kind of sexually transmitted disease evaluation, men who are having sex with men and people with chronic liver disease. Now the vaccine which comes for hepatitis B is Injurix B. It is a killed vaccine. It is given at the dose of 0.5 ml IM at the insertion of deltoid. But for people, for adults on hemodialysis, a dose of uh, four doses are given. But any adult who is a, a healthy adult, it is given in only two doses. Now the schedule for adults, uh, adolescents, the adolescent age group is from 10 to 19 years. We give 0.5 ml. The schedule is 0, 1 and 6 months. And for adults who are more than 20 years, it is 0.5 ml, 0, 1 and 6 months. And for people who are on hemodialysis, we, are, we give it at 4 doses. That is 0, 1, 2 and 6 months. Contraindications for this vaccine include severe allergic reactions to any of the component of the vaccine or anybody who is uh, allergic to yeast, that person is contraindicated for vaccination. Now the question will arise that if the health professionals take this hepatitis B vaccination, at what interval should we continue it? So for this, we have to do the titer measurement, that is the anti-HPS AG titer. So if the titer is more than 10 international unit per ml, then we do not give any vaccination, but if the titer is Less, less than 10 international unit per ml, then we have to follow the full vaccination again. 
Now there is also some good news for people with cancer. So this is a vaccine that we'll be talking about that is against cancer. So the most common cause of cervical cancer is human papilloma virus. Now this vaccine is indicated for people uh, for women. Now human papilloma virus vaccine comes in two forms. One is the quadrivalent form and the bivalent form. The bivalent form is known as uh, Cervarix and the quadrivalent form is known as Gardasil. Now the target for the bivalent vaccine is against only two strains of HPV that is human papilloma virus that is 16 and 18 and the quadrivalent is against 6, 11, 16 and 18 strain. Now the efficacy of both the vaccines are almost same 83 to 85 percent and the safety has been assured by different trials. Now when the question comes when should this cervical cancer vaccine be given now this should be given before the onset of any sexual activity that means before the person before the female starts her sexual debut she should be taken she should be administered this vaccine now we haven't included uh, hpv uh, vaccine in our national immunization schedule because of the cost so there are multiple reasons why we have not been able to include it in the immunization schedule but we however give it in the optional vaccine list now the catch up vaccination can be given at the age of 26 years for Gardasil and at the age of 45 years for Cervarix. Now contraindications for this vaccine include pregnancy. That means if a female is pregnant, she should never be given this vaccine. Patients who are having any hypersensitivity to any of the components of this vaccine be contraindicated. Now when is it given? It is given as three doses, 0, 1 and 6 months, 0.5 ml and IM. So this is also a killed vaccine. Now there are certain special situations where this uh, human papilloma virus vaccine is given. For example, breastfeeding. Your question will come, should breastfeeding females be given or not? Yes, in breastfeeding this vaccine can be given very safely. Women who are having complaints of genital warts, in them as well we can give this vaccine. Any patient who comes with a very uh, history of abnormal pap smear, in those patients also we can give these vaccines. So there are four conditions in which this vaccine is never contraindicated that is in breastfeeding, in history of genital warts, in history of abnormal pap smear result and a patient who is immunocompromised. Now there are different things uh, which come uh, when we consider a vaccine, uh, if, when we consider if the vaccine should be included in the national immunization schedule or not. So there are some recommendations that we can give. Uh, you know this vaccine is produced in the foreign countries so when we get it to India the expense rate is really high so what we can promote here is make in India that means we can have a very cost effective vaccine next is lack of public awareness sometimes the health professionals as well as those who are the beneficiaries they are not aware that such kind of vaccine is available and lastly the high cost of vaccine so these are the hindrances which are coming in this vaccine Next coming to pneumococcal infection. Now streptococcus pneumonia as I already told it is one of the major causes of hospital acquired infections. Now to combat this we have pneumococcal vaccine but this pneumococcal vaccine has been introduced long back in India but we have the vaccine as PCV7, PCV10, PCV13, PCV23. These numbers they indicate the serotypes that means how many serotypes are being protected by vaccination. Now two types of vaccines are available against pneumococcal vaccination. They are polysaccharide vaccine and conjugate vaccine. Now the advantage of conjugate vaccine is that the immunogenicity of conjugate vaccine is much more than the polysaccharide vaccine. Now gradually PCV7 has been removed from the market and what we have now is PCV13 and PCV23. Earlier the cost of the vaccine was really high but now government is gradually introducing it in the national immunization schedule. Pneumococcal vaccination is indicated for all individuals who are 65 years and above. Now individuals are sometimes at medical risk. So individuals from 24 months, that is the children in till 64 years of age who are at medical risk, that means alcoholism, some kind of chronic heart disease or if there is CSF leak, in those patients also pneumococcal vaccination is indicated. However, as I told in healthy individuals, all individuals above 65 years of age should be taking pneumococcal vaccination. 
Now coming to the most important one that causes a lot of hype and buzz every year that is the influenza vaccine. As we all know, we are having the threat of pandemic influenza every year. So WHO introduces this vaccine, the strain of the vaccine changes every year in the month of February. Now influenza A and influenza B are globally very important uh, pathogens causing epidemics. Now we have two types of vaccines that is the trivalent vaccine and the quadrivalent vaccine. I must tell you that for the year 2017 and 2018, WHO has told not to include any kind of live influenza vaccine. So all the influenza shots that are given today are killed vaccines. So each February, as I told, WHO provides a recommendation on the strains to be included in the influenza vaccine for all for Northern Hemisphere, but this is what we follow in India as well. Now for the, tech, for the trivalent vaccine, it includes two influenza A virus and one influenza B. And for the quadrivalent vaccine, we include two influenza A virus and two influenza B. Now the strains which are included for 2016-17 and it is continuing for 17-18 are the Michigan strain, the Hong Kong strain, the Brisbane strain and for the quadrivalent we are also including the Phuket strain. This is very important from exam point of view as well. Now for WH, according to WHO recommendations all pregnant women, children aged 6 to 59 months, elderly individuals with any chronic medical conditions health workers, all of this should be given influenza shots. Now, is there any reaction against this influenza vaccine? Yes, if the live vaccine is given, we can have some kind of flu symptoms. But for the killed vaccine, we can have only soreness at the site of injection or fever. That's it. Now, any other reactions to the live vaccine? Yes, the major uh, adverse reactions have been, uh, have been shown in some countries like we have the GBS syndrome, Guillain-Barre syndrome and we have ocular respiratory syndrome. Now a very expensive vaccine that we'll be talking about today is the meningococcal vaccine. It is uh, the vaccine's name is Menectra. It is indicated against meningococcal disease which is endemic in India. The strain of the vaccine includes group A C Y W 135. Now this is given or it is approved for the age group of 9 months till 55 years of age. It is stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade that is for as similar as other vaccines and it is administered at the dose of 0.5 ml dose and it is given intramuscular. There is no major contraindications or any major side effect for this vaccine. Now coming to varicella that is chicken pox, a vaccine against chicken pox. When you students stay in the hostel and there is an outbreak of chicken pox, you know all of you tend to get scared. So it is recommended that all hostelites, anybody staying in a crowded area, all these adults are recommended to take this chicken pox vaccines and we being health professionals should also be taking this chicken pox vaccine. Now it is a live vaccine. The name of the vaccine comes as Varilix, Varivax, Okavax. Now this vaccine for less than 13 years of age, only one dose is given, subcutaneous 0.5 ml and those who are above 13 years of age, we give two doses one month apart that is four weeks gap and it is also given as subcutaneous 0.5 ml. All susceptible adults and adolescents should be vaccinated as I told about hostelites and people living in a crowded area, healthcare workers, family contacts of immunocompromised persons and high risk of exposure like teachers, daycare employees, military camps. Next, this, there is a major uh, uh, change in the DPT vaccine for adults. A diphtheria, pertussis and tetanus however are not seen much in the adults but if it but sometimes in some cases this adults can get the, these diseases from their children. So there are two vaccines which have come one is Adacil and next is Boosterix. Healthcare personnel especially those in direct contact with the patients and pregnant females they are given a vaccine known as Tdap. Earlier, government had recommended that we give TT to the pregnant ladies. Now the recommendation has changed. What we give is the TDAP. The small a here is the acellular pertussis. Now women planning pregnancy should receive only one dose of TDAP if they have not received it previously. This is unlike the tetanus toxoid that we used to give in two doses. Now if a female uh, pregnant has forgotten or she has somehow missed 
taking this vaccine during her pregnancy this vaccine can be given very safely one month after postpartum now the next vaccine is mmr which is measles mumps and rubella this is indicated in all the girls all adolescent girls including adolescent boys as well now this is a live vaccines for the measles we have edmonston zagreb strain for mumps we have the l zagreb and for rubella we have r827 by 3 strain now this vaccine is a live vaccine just like chickenpox and it is given subcutaneous 0.5 ml all the adults more than 18 years of age at least one dose of mmr vaccine is given if there is no serological proof that the uh, that the person has received this vaccine earlier adults in the high risk such as international travelers can be recommended to uh, take two doses now all this recommendations come from comes from the advisory committee for immunization practice but this advisory committee can only give recommendations it depends on the government of the particular country which vaccines to follow now all women of child bearing age should uh, who do not ac uh, do not have acceptable evidence of rubella vaccination should also be given this vaccine now in india what we have done is we have launched the mr campaign that is the measles and the rubella campaign wherein we go and catch hold of all the adolescent females and we give them this vaccine now the contraindications include uh, previous anaphylactic reaction to any of the component of the vaccine pregnancy yes pregnancy is a very important contraindication if a person is planning for pregnancy in the next 4 weeks as well we do not give this vaccine persons who are immunocompromised these patients or these persons are also not given this vaccine now there are certain special situations wherein Uh, we always being a healthcare professional or a manufacturer they have a question mark if the particular vaccine has to be indicated or not for example pregnant and lactating mothers now all live vaccines are completely contraindicated in pregnancy please remember all live vaccines are completely contraindicated in pregnancy all inactivated vaccines can be at can be administered but there has to be a very strong indication now coming to hep uh, human papilloma virus vaccines i have told you the special situation that is in lactating mothers human papilloma vaccine can be given pregnancy must be avoided for at least one month after the um, injection of varicella and mmr tdap has to be given that is the vaccine for diphtheria pertussis and tetanus at 24 to 37 weeks and 36 weeks of gestation if the dose is missed in pregnancy we can give it postpartum now all vaccines can be given in lactation except there is one vaccine which is not given that is the yellow fever vaccine we'll be talking about yellow fever vaccine in the later class now yellow fever vaccine is given mostly to the international travelers uh, if they are traveling to a country where it is endemic so this vaccines gives uh, protection for at least 10 years so the protection starts from 10 days after vaccination and it continues till 10 years however this vaccine is in is contraindicated in lactation but if it is mandatory to give if the lactating woman is traveling then we can give the vaccine but she has to stop vaccination for at least 10 days now there are certain challenges in adult immunization first of all we have very inadequate funding for vaccines in india and for public programs for adult vaccination now there is lack of knowledge among patients as well as providers like doctors much about adult vaccination has not been done in india next is the poor infrastructure that we have and lastly is the high cost of the vaccines now these vaccines come as optional vaccines and they range from more than 1000 so a normal uh, individual uh, with a very moderate income is not able to uh, afford this kind of vaccines so we should not wait and we should just vaccinate ourselves so in today's class we discussed about the important vaccines which are included under adult immunization in next class we will be talking about the vaccines which are under trial and hopefully will be included under adult immunization now who though has been concentrating more on childhood immunization but it keeps issuing a list of adult immunization every year so we have to go through the different sites of uh, advisory committee of immunization practice indian academy of pediatrics american academy of pediatrics so Uh, see you in next class thank you